I believe there is some kind of a magic around us that keeps us together. If I was alone, I would have stopped a while ago, for sure. Because we have a strength together. So if one is down, the other, at least one is up. Yeah. Working in a group is very intense. It's like being in a band. There's a lot of up and downs, a lot of patience that needs to be involved. And just like in any relationship, it's a lot of work. And every day you ask yourself again if this is worth it. You know, our love for each other and our devotion is just stronger and especially our devotion to our, to our dream and to this project of ours. Each one of us comes from a very conflicting place. I was born in Tajikistan, which is an ex-Soviet Union, and we moved to Germany when I was little. I was born in Israel. I grew up with my grandparents, and they were all survivors from the war. My grandpa was an Auschwitz survivor. My parents were kicked out of Israel. They're Palestinian. So all my life, I, I've been watching my parents bitch about the Jews. I always heard because of what they went through, always about the Germans. You know, the 80s in Germany, were, it was not too friendly for people from, you know, somewhere outside of Germany. If you looked a little bit slightly different, people would start spitting at you. I never really felt at home there. Between 15 and 16, we moved to Germany. So I was very kind of traumatized at first. I grew up in Beirut, where there was first a war between the Christians and the Palestinians. Then it became a war between the Christians and the Muslims. Then it became a war between the Muslims and the Muslims. Then the Christians and the Christians. When I saw all of this stupidity, that how stupid it was for my parents to bitch about the Jews. So that's when I, I realized that I gotta get out of here. I, I cannot do anything about this here. And the best place to do something about this is here, is New York City. Because everybody coexists in peace. There's an, an Indian guy and there's a Chinese guy crossing each other on the street and there's an Islamic woman with the shadow on and then the, the Jehovah Witnesses and then there's the Hasidic. You see them in the subways. So the perfect example for the future of humanity. New York City, I think, represents it the best. The two of us met in Germany. Man, we clicked immediately. As soon as we finished school, we realized uh, Germany isn't really a place for both of us, so... We somehow landed in New York. Two suitcases, some cash in the pockets, and, you know, let the adventure begin. We used to wear a lot of makeup and crazy hairdos. Everybody can just be completely themselves, you know, and nobody really gives a shit. So after one week, we knew exactly we're going to stay here. We started styling together. We were literally the first styling team, actually. People telling us, what are you, crazy? Why don't you go on your own? We're like, no, together is so much stronger and better. And I got my first job at Marc Jacobs for Perry Ellis. I guess I was lucky enough because there was a gay man that liked me. So from there, I did a lot of shitty jobs in, on 7th Avenue. Yeah, Gabby was the one who actually went down the corporate route in a way. You know, he's the one who has the most experience. I, I really learned the nitty gritty about the industry. But we felt like we were from a different planet almost. And when we met the others, we knew we, we were all from the same planet. I don't remember exactly how, but we met Gabby. We started working together and it just clicked. We spent all day, all night together. <coughs> we didn't look at news or watch TV. Or we just wanted to create a new world that was ours. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, we had the theme of geometry of plants, spirals, mm -hmm. vortexes trying to work with the flow of the body and the energy field around the body. The clothes have this feeling of coming from the inside of the body to the surface and from the surface of the body into space. What's nice right now is that the West is catching up and understanding that the real wisdom comes from the, the indigenous. The indigenous kept the wisdom, they kept the knowledge. We lost the knowledge. Well, there's very few people in, in the West that have the knowledge but they don't share it. The elders in indigenous, that's all they do is teach it. And it's usually spoken, it's never written. Knowledge cannot be behind closed it's doors. So true. When we actually went to Israel, we were invited to go to do a exhibition in a, at the museum. Only three or four, it's not gonna be enough. So we decided to invite Jewish and Arabic artists to be a part. 
We had some Palestinian artists, some Israeli artists, some Jewish artists. Yoko Ono as well gave us um, her wishing tree. So it became this big group show. And that was one of the most beautiful moments, I think. And now our upcoming show is kind of a continuation of that one. Arabic world, the Jewish world, but we also brought in the Christian world. Combine all the, the new religions, the three religions, which come from the old religions. What humanity has done is build you know, monuments. In these monuments, there's certain geometries that always repeat. That there's so many geometries in all these different places that intersect. Something called tiling that was in these geometries that was used all over the, the world, from India all the way to the US. In tiling systems, when you have a wall, it's a, a culmination of a one unit. So in a way, using tiling was a representation that the whole comes from a unit and the unit creates the whole. So by using tiling, we felt we could also deal with things that are outside humanity. It's not just about the religions, but also the connection of humanity to animals and to plants and to the planet and to other planets and other solar systems and galaxies. As a, a message of unity, we feel like geometry is the essence of it. I look more for the unity between everybody because I think we're all the same in the end. We're all going to go to the same place and we're all coming from the same place. I'm, I hope we're doing our job right, that you know, it should be inspiring. Inspiration is our key concern rather than the selling point. To be able to make clothes and have some kind of a message behind it means so much because in the end of the day nobody needs more clothes nobody needs another dress but if we do something and there is a meaning behind it bring people together for me this is like a dream come true we, we're becoming more wise and we're healing ourselves from you know all the shit that we went through